We're reading the whole Bible today. Today is day 315. We're reading John 14, 15, 16, and 17. All four of these chapters take place at the end of the Last Supper. John 14 is a conversation while they're still there. Then Jesus says, let's go. 15 seems to be at least partially on the way, or maybe 15 into 16 is on the way. And then when they arrive in the garden where Jesus is going to pray, the conversation at some point finishes, and then 17 is his prayers. Sometime around 17, we have the part in Luke and the other gospels where Jesus is praying and sweating drops of blood and says, Father, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. All of that is somewhere right around 17. I think probably right at the beginning where Jesus is praying for himself, Father, glorify the Son, glorify me that I might glorify you right in the midst of that prayer somewhere. It makes sense that the, the other parts happen as well. And then it sort of moves into this more hopeful place as he prays for the 12, and then he prays uh, for all believers. The content of all of this, John 14, he's starting to tell them like, hey, I'm about to leave, but don't be dismayed. When I go, I'm preparing a place for you and you'll know the way. And they're like, but we don't know the way. He says, yes, I am the way to the Father and I'm going to the Father. So if you know me, you know the way because I am the truth, the life and the way. And then he says, I will send the Holy Spirit to you. I, when I get to the Father, I will ask him and he will send a counselor. He will send him the Holy Spirit. This is where we have very clear evidence that the language used to discuss and talk about the work of the Holy Spirit in these chapters, the Holy Spirit is not an it. It's not a force. It's not just the impersonal power of God working in us and through us, but he is the third member of the Trinity. He is also God because he's, he's accomplishing all the work of God. He's doing all the things of God. He's not just a messenger, but he is the presence of God with us. And yet... He is not the son. He is not the father. He comes from the father. He's sent by the father, not produced by the father, not a piece of the father, but a separate person who is a counselor and the spirit of truth. As Jesus continues on, then he gets into talking about the vine and the branches and how he is the source of life. We're the branches. We're on the outside. And as we bear fruit or not, we are trimmed out and removed, cast out to condemnation or to or kept in and brought into salvation and eternal life by the father and this is where here is a new command i give you love each other as i have loved you jesus says and then he says and this is not going to go easy this is not going to go well for you if the world hated me they're going to go so much harder at you and yet take comfort take joy and so that's what John 16 gets into is the work of the Holy Spirit. Part of that is that he's going to come and comfort us and bring us joy in the midst of this, that he will guide us into truth. He will guide us into the way that we need to live to arrive in the place where Jesus is preparing for us. And that, and so Jesus begins to pray and promise that our grief will turn to joy, the disciples grief in this moment. And even more as they're starting to get disturbed, like, what do you mean you're going away? What do you mean all this? And he says, don't worry, it's going to be like labor. Like that part is terrible, but there's a new baby on the other side of it. And so it's a joyful moment and it's worth the pain. You're going to see Jesus die and that's going to be wretched. But then on the other side of it, there's going to be new life resurrection for him and for all who believe in him moving forward. And so then we get to these prayers in John 17, where Jesus prays for himself that he would glor glorify the Father. He prays for the disciples that they would stay encouraged, that they would find joy in the midst of their suffering, and that they would be protected from the evil one, that they would not fall away. Not that they would not have any suffering, but that they would find joy in it, that they would remain faithful and not be taken down by the evil one. And then he prays for all believers, essentially, that we would all stay on mission unified together. And so in all of this, the plan is all coming together. And as hard as it is to face and as, as rough and hurtful as it was to Jesus to be the sacrifice that would pay for and offer salvation to all of humanity who would place faith in Yahweh in the Son, Jesus, he is the one and only way. There's no other way to eternal life. There's no other way to salvation. There's no other way to enlightenment or anything else. You want enlightenment? Put your faith in Jesus. Receive the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of truth, and he will guide you into all truth so that you will know and be enlightened, that you have the light of Christ in you. The clarity and power of in Christ alone 
can we approach the father in christ alone can we go to where we want to be going which is eternity eternal blessed life and salvation that's through christ by the power of the holy spirit working in us now and forever amen so where is god speaking to you how is the holy spirit the spirit of truth revealing the heart of god to you in this passage and what challenges you and then any questions or comments you have as well let's talk about those things keep reading be faithful in digging into the word of god and be rad for jesus